welcome to another episode of the Corner of Craft podcast. Welcome to my Corner of Craft. Well, room of craft, craft technically, but you're in a kind of a corner of it, so we'll make it work. How are you all doing? I hope you're all well. It's been a good fortnight since you've last seen this face, so I hope that wasn't a very long two weeks for you all. Um, or maybe it wasn't long enough, who knows. As I've already said, my name is Hannah. I'm coming at you today from a slightly windy, quite chilly, but also very sunny Nottingham in the UK. Um, the reason I look this way as I say all of that is because I've got my window just here. Um, which probably means I should film my podcast facing, but meh. this is a much more interesting background, for it is yarn. This is the stash, you know? You know? Um, I have been well. I hope you all have been as well, as I've already said. I do have a cup of tea with me. It is my first of the day. I have had zero caffeine so far this morning. I am enjoying a cup of... I will be, um, English breakfast tea by Bird and Blend, uh, who used to be the Bluebird Tea Company, because I've decided um, to stop using tea bags as much as I can. Um, I will use up the tea bags that I currently have, but I thought, why contribute more to the world's waste when you can just use loose leaf tea? And it actually tastes a little bit better. Um, but yeah, so that is what's been happening in my life. If you'd like to follow me on social media, you are more than welcome to. Ta-da! Um, links can all be found in the description box of this video as well. And I also have a Ravelry group, and I actually remembered to do podcast notes last time, so go me. Hopefully I will this time too. Um, and in that Ravelry group, you'll find information on any uh, knit-alongs I've got going on, the podcast notes you know, that kind of shebang. Um, and speaking of knit-alongs, after last week's podcast, I took a look at my stash and was a little ashamed by it because there's quite a lot there. Um, and I thought, I need to get some of this down. So I've decided to host a stash-busting knit-along and it's called Stash Cow 2018. It started on the 1st of September and it's going to be going until the 31st of December. You can knit anything you like, just the yarn that you've bought has to have been bought before the 1st of September. So I'm not saying you're not allowed to buy any more yarn, I'm just saying for this particular knit along you're not allowed to knit with it. But there are plenty of other knit alongs around so still feel free to buy my yarn. Uh, shameless plug. But um, I need to get some of this down and thought that I could enlist the help of some of my friends to help me, you know? Um, whips are allowed, but they have to be 50% or less completed before the 1st of September. Um, and double dipping's allowed. Enter as many other cows as you like. I know that there's a few stash busting cows out there. Just decided to host one of my own. Hop aboard that train, if you will because I think this is going to be quite exciting. So there is a chatter thread and a finished objects thread, both in my Ravelry group. No chatter in the finished objects thread, please, but I will be drawing prizes from both of them. Um, and that is very exciting. So, Stash Cal 2018, woo! Um, I announced it on Instagram. It's had an overwhelming response. So thank you all very much. Um, my hair is still wet. I washed my hair this morning. Even though I'm going to be dyeing it this afternoon, um, because this is disgusting. I'm kind of hardcore hating my hair right now, but it's okay. So I just washed it this morning, and then I'll dye it this afternoon. Because I thought, can't get on camera with gross hair. I wouldn't do that to you all. This is my last podcast as a 27 year old. Um, ooh, getting caught on my jumper. Um, yeah, last podcast as a 27 year old, so that's slightly stress inducing. Um, it's my birthday on Monday. So, it's the same day as Joanna of the Stitching the High Notes podcast. We are birthday buddies 
um, Opera Jo, you may also know her as, and yes, I am approaching my 30s very quickly, so. So it's been a few weeks since I've had any finished objects for you, but I'll tell you what, I've got one and a bit finished objects. Does that make sense? So let's get, you know, the elephant in the room out of the room. Let's just address what I'm wearing. So I finished my test knit for Tristan of Dragon Hall Young. Da -da, da -da -da -da. This is the Find My Way sweater. This is going to be released on September the 23rd, I believe. Um, thank you, very loud motorized vehicle for being very loud outside. Uh, this is the Find My Way sweater. It, it I test knit it for her. Um, let's just do one of these. Dee -dee -dee. I got a vest on underneath it, because why not? Dee -dee -dee. Like, I definitely could have, should have maybe knit the large, but um, I knit the medium. I like them to be slightly more fitted. And also, I'm a bit chunkier than I often am. I'm working on it, slowly but surely. Um, So this is it, you've got this fun antler cable up the front and you've got twiddly cables up the side, it's all done in garter stitch um, which is fun and then you've got an antler cable up the sleeve, I don't know if you can see that clearly in this yarn, uh, the sleeves are more fitted, it's meant to be like a baggy oversized jumper um, but like I said I knit it's probably a size smaller than I could have done but this is all knit out of my I'll stop having you look at my bust. This is all knit out of my um, hand-dyed yarn, which is under the guise of chromatic yarns. It can be found on the corner of craft.co.uk. Out of my sturdy DK base, which is a blue face Leicester, 100%. Um, shockingly, I only used four skeins for this whole jumper. I have a little nugget left of the fourth skein. I dyed up six for it. I used four. And like... I'm quite tall, that's what I established from last podcast, um, but it's not, it's not short on me, you know? Um, oh, sorry, didn't mean to knock the camera. So who knows, I just must have been lucky with that. Um, but yeah, this is in my Mero colourway. Uh, my yarns are all dyed in for things inspired by um dungeons and dragons so mero are basically evil merfolk which i think is pretty cool so it's just like a dark blue navy with pops of teal which is fun and yeah super comfy i think i'm gonna be wearing this quite a lot um it's the first button up jumper i've ever knit it's my first cable jumper i've ever knit uh, it's the first jumper that I've ever knit where my sleeves actually are long enough for me because I usually get bored. Oh, yeah. my nails even match. How unintentional. Um, sorry, jangly bracelets. I jangle wherever I go. Um, yeah, it's the first time I've actually knit sleeves long enough. Usually I get bored, but because of the cable, I didn't get bored. Because, uh, yeah, really like knitting cables. This is a thing I have learnt through knitting this jumper. So like I said, the pattern is not released yet. We're still waiting for, well basically, Tristan has the pattern ready to go. We're waiting for a few other test knitters to finish up to see if they pick up on anything else. Um, and also she, uh, Tristan's got Vogue Knitting Live to get out of the way because she's the dyer behind Dragon Hold Yarn. Half of the girls in the Yarn Cafe podcast. Um, So September the 23rd is when this is released, which is actually quite soon. So that is exciting. And I have a jumper to wear on my birthday. Really enjoyed knitting it, didn't get bored of it at all. Discovered a love of cables. Win, win, win. Um, yeah, I'll stop looking at myself in the viewfinder. So let's get to the and a bit finished object. 
Um, I'm just trying to find the front page of the pattern so I can find out who it's by. So I was knitting the If I Want Exposure I'll Get My Tits Out Shawl, uh, which was as part which was part of the Tits Out Collective um, by Countess Ablaze. And this shawl is by Tina van der Berg, van den Berg. I'm sorry, uh, that was a very German accent. I'm aware. I don't know what a Dutch accent would be. It's awesome. Uh, so you got the German accent. But I finished my shawl. It needs blocking. The reason it wasn't blocking is because I was waiting for my blocking pins to arrive because now I've got blocking mats. My blocking pins arrived yesterday but I didn't want to soak it and put this on to block because then it wouldn't be dry for the podcast. Um, but that will be what I'm going to be doing after this. But it's huge. It's huge. And I think it's going to block out even bigger because I've got to stretch this lace out, you know? So I think it's going to be a big old shawl. I used... Um, Two skeins of yarn, both of which which I bought at Woolen. Uh, this shawl, the reason you didn't see this shawl last week is because it had to be put on hold. Um, I had to put it on another, I had to put it on waist yarn uh, so I could knit this jumper. And so, yeah. This took priority over this because this was a test knit and this was a fun knit. This was also a fun knit, but you know what I mean. Um, so, this was knit out of... Das Monschaf, which means the moon sheep, for those who don't speak German. Das Monschaf, I uh, bought it at Woolen, uh, which was the yarn festival I went to in Dublin in May. End of May. Um, it's on her Hydra base, which is 100% Supersh Merino. And the light coloured speckly one is called Butterfly Effect. And then this bluey greeny one is called Disc World. And I thought it was called Disco World. It is not, it's called Disco World. Um, my ends are all woven in, but I like to block it before I snip it. Um, I don't know why, it's just what I do. Um, I had fun trying to work out how to sew an ends through basic eyelets. But yes, they are all woven in. So it's just a really nice eyelet pattern and then it's got like these stocking stitch sections which also have eyelets in and then at the end you've got a bit of garter stitch on the edge um, oop. because of the garter stitch on the edge I decided to do an Icelandic bind off or cast off let's use proper English terminology um, so I used an Icelandic cast off because I think it looks really nice with garter stitch. Um, it meant that while you're meant to be knitting back and forwards on the last row, I pulled back so I did a row of stocking stitch basically. Um, and that meant that when I did the garter stitch cast off or the Icelandic cast off, it didn't look so weird. Um, but I thought that this was going to be like a spring or early autumn kind of shawl um, but I think I could probably get away with it in the winter. I've got about half a skein, oh, I need to weigh it, but I've got maybe just under half a skein left of the light blue colour. So the original pattern does have tassels on so maybe I'll put tassels on um, but I'll decide after I block it obviously. God, I do love a tassel. And I just think it's really nice. Um, if you watched my woolen haul, I said this in there, but um, the dyer behind Das Monschaf was really, really good at how she laid out her stall in that she put these two colours next to each other and she put colours next to each other that went really well. So I went over and thought, these two look really nice together and then bought them. So I bought into the hype but yes actually really enjoyed this knit it was a bit of a slog at the end I won't lie uh, purely because I was desperate to cast something else on I wanted something new to be knitting um, but I almost didn't knit the full amount at the end but then I thought I've come this far I may as well knit the full amount of garter 
And you know what? I'm really glad I did because otherwise it might look a bit weird and short. So yeah, real like this. I will be blocking it post podcast. Probably lay it out in the middle of my now clear craft room. I've been having such a tidy up and clear out and it's been slightly therapeutic. I have enjoyed it. Let's have a sip of tea, get a bit thirsty. get it into uh, whips and hose, shall we? So I've got a couple of sock whips on the go, as I'm sure you know. One of them at least, but it's now a half object. I have finished one of these socks. I need to cast the other one on, ready for Saturday, because uh, I'm going out for some birthday drinks. And we're having people around here as well. So I need some knitting to be doing. Uh, so I will be casting the second one on for that. But this is just a basic, my basic vanilla sock. Um, I am using Babbles Yarns on her, I want to say it's the Bamboozle base, um, which is a blend of Superwash, Merino, Nylon and Bamboo. And this is in the Calypso colour. This was also bought at Woolen and is also a very similar colour to the shawl I've just finished. Um, clearly I was on a colour scheme that day. But to me it reminds me of like cabbages and succulents. And I was knitting this drunken dropped a stitch and I haven't sewn that in yet. We'll get there. The heel that I am, oh, it's 64 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter needle. And the heel that I'm using is the New Depths Heel by Becky Sorensen. This is my favorite heel, not only to knit, but also because it fits my foot fantastically. Um, for those of you who've been watching this podcast for a while, you will know I have to mention Becky in every podcast because she is my best friend and I love her dearly, but also because I'm often using her heel pattern. Um, Becky is Soprano Knits online and is hostess of the Stringing It Together podcast. She has recently got a new job and I'm so proud of her and excited for her and now have a perfect excuse to go and visit her when she moves. Um, New Depths Heel, really good for people who have really high arches, me. Um, Becky always said she had high arches and then she saw my feet and my feet, like a bit of my foot doesn't touch the floor because my arches are so high. It means that wearing high heels is like nigh impossible. Um, because intense pain and also just because my foot sticks out of the shoe um but i have like my heel goes like this and then my foot goes like this and then my toes go up it's weird i have a wiggly foot but uh let's stop talking about feet otherwise i'm going to attract the wrong kind of audience to this podcast uh yes really like this yarn really enjoying the knit you know what it's just my sock mojo is dead um it really is i'm sorry it just is. I'm sure it'll come back because I've got a few skeins of yarn, like this sock blank just here. And they're all destined to be socks, but right now, I don't want to be knitting socks. But very useful for pub knits. So the other sock that I had that I showed you last time, um, that I have since finished, is a sock that I'm knitting for Mario. Um, so this is also just a basic ribbed sock it's not a vanilla sock at all which is what i was going to say because i've been struggling the last few pairs of socks i've knit mario have been far too big on him so i think i need to adjust the amount of stitches that i have but instead of doing that i'm just doing a ribbed sock instead um 72 stitches on a 2.5 millimeter needle so maybe i need to go down for a 2.25 for him as well um two by two rib for 15 rounds at the top and then three by one rib on the leg, I did a heel flap and gusset for the first time in edges, because uh, I know they fit his foot real well. And then trying to do an eye of partridge heel. I talked about this in my last podcast. It doesn't look as good as I've seen a lot of people's looks. So maybe my tension is wrong. And then yeah, I think it fits. I hope it fits. I put it on his foot and he didn't seem very enthusiastic, but I did also do it whilst he was in the middle of playing video games. So maybe that was why he was less enthusiastic, because I potentially made Lara Croft die. But, you know, whatever. Socks take priority over Tomb Raider sometimes. Um, but yeah, uh, it's not ribbed on the bottom. It's just on the top of the foot. And I did cast on the second sock. And 
and I need to sort out the second sock because I cast on the second sock and then I was knitting it in the cinema and then I can't knit ribbed socks in the cinema is what I have learnt. Um, I get very distracted apparently and when I think that I'm counting one, two, three, pearl, one, two, three, pearl, um, apparently I'm not counting that and I'm just counting God knows what. So um, I'd knit a couple of stitches and have to go backwards. And Anyway, it was distracting from my enjoyability of The Incredibles 2. So it went away and I didn't knit through this film and I actually watched it. Excuse me, tea hiccup. Although I always watch it when I'm knitting in the cinema anyway, but you know what I mean. Um, this is what it looks like so far. But I think I'm just gonna take the needles out, rip it out completely and knit it back. Might do that today after this whilst editing this. So I'm meeting up with some friends for tea. Uh, Cause that's what we do. We meet up, we get cake and tea. And it's a great combination of things to be doing. Um, and so yeah, I might just start that all over again and call that version of it a fail. So the yarn that I'm using for this is actually my own hand dyed yarn. It's not a particular colourway that I have. This was one of the first skeins that I dyed while I was living in Germany. Um, it's on a 75-25 superwash merino nylon base, but it's like, it wasn't an expensive skein of yarn uh, that I bought that was undyed. And it feels very like rough. You know how sometimes merino yarn, I don't have any here. What's this? That's not, that is, it's very soft and quite nice. This isn't as soft. This would make an awful shawl, Amon Abbey, because it would be very scratchy on the neck. Um, but perfect for socks, because Mario will probably wear these to death, because he wears knitted socks a lot in the winter. Although well, maybe he won't now he's a baker and wears Crocs. Maybe not, who knows. So I've got one final whip to share with you. This is going to be a significantly shorter podcast than previous podcasts. Because I don't have any stash enhancement to share with you. Soz. Um, I am having a shop update, but my yarn is still all drying downstairs, so I can't really show you it. Um, but all of these games that are here, before I get onto my final whip, are not in the shop. Um because they were in my Etsy shop and they somehow didn't transfer over when I opened my Spotify shop. No, Shopify shop, my new shop, cornercraft.co.uk. Um, so I've got sort of one-off skeins that were in my shop that didn't make it across um, that I'll be putting in my shop, along with uh, quite a lot of DK because I want to knit hats. It's very selfish, I know. I'm dying things that I would want to use, but... Anyway, speaking of hats, let's tie it back into what we were talking about. I've decided to see what all this hype is about about mohair. Because I don't know. I'm still not convinced by it. I bought myself a skein of Rowan... Rowan, sorry. Kid Silk Haze. I have a feeling that's got one of my hairs in it. I oh, know it's not, it's just a bit of darker wool. Uh, Kid Silk Haze in a cream colour, can't remember the number. Um, and I decided to see what all the hype was about. Tristan, who designed this, has released a hat pattern called the Hyde Park Hat, and it's a fantastic combination of cables and bobbles. So I've decided to cast it on. So two days ago, cast it on, and I already got quite a lot in it. So, um, I'm holding this ball of fluff double with this, which is from Stash, therefore it is being entered into my Stash Moscow. Um, this is Nora George Yarns, Ooh. Ooh, the sun's gone in, um, on her Super Sock, which is 25% Superwash Merino, nope, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, um, and it's in her colour Eggnog. Very Christmassy. I bought this at Nottingham Yarn Expo last year. Um, 
and it's geared up closer and personal. So it's kind of like this creamy beige colour with speckles of purple and darker beigey colours and it's really pretty. Um, but I'm holding it double with the fluffiness. I just keep stroking it on my face and I probably shouldn't. This is a Christmas knit. I'm getting ahead of the game. Um, and also I will be entering this into Strings and More. Um, have a podcast. It's called the Strings and More podcast. Um, and they're having a hat along, which also kicked off on September the 1st. And it's running for a month. So I need to get a bit of a wiggle on, even though I'm only halfway through September. But um, I've got a bit of a late start. So that I've decided to knit this for the hat along. So this is the Hyde Park hat by Trista Molina. Um, it's got bobbles, it's got cables, it's got twisted rib. Um, the observant among you, or people that are good at remembering things, uh, will remember that I have frequently said that I have a giant head. And you may think, Hannah, this is not going to fit you. But luckily, it's not for me. I don't think it would fit me terribly comfortably, but it would go on my head, which is an optimistic start, I suppose. Um, because I didn't even think it would go on my head. See, now I don't know if I do want to get rid of it, because it's very fluffy. Um, but it's really fun. So it's got, like, this cably bit up here, it's got this cably bit here, it's got bobbles every so often, and I won't lie, I had to cast it on quite a few times and then take it off and rip it out, and God knows what. Um, and this yarn didn't enjoy that. But apparently I can't count, so it's entirely on me. Um, I've been watching um, documentaries about serial killers on YouTube, so maybe I was very distracted by that. Um, but we got there eventually. I was even able to knit this during Dungeons and Dragons, which just goes to show that it's not a terribly difficult pattern to knit. Um, you don't need to have a lot of experience with cables, I don't think, to be able to knit this. Tristan's included video or links to video tutorials um, to how to do things as well as just flat out explaining how to do them and yeah I am really enjoying having knitting patterns that are patterned not just vanilla which is why I think I am bored of those socks I'm knitting I'm just not in a vanilla sock mood um, Easy to, I said this on Instagram yesterday, just really into easy to memorise patterned knits. Like this was super easy to memorise. And this is super easy to memorise. You know? The fluff keeps getting up my nose though, so. I was knitting this during Dungeons and Dragons and my friend that was sat next to me just kept scratching his nose. I had to apologise, so I'm really sorry. Like, what are you sorry for? I said, well, the reason you keep scratching your nose is because the fluff of my yarn keeps getting up your nose. And like, I feel like I've inhaled more of this mohair than I've knit with. But the effect is lovely. I was talking to Mario about it. I was like, Mario, look at this. He was like, ooh, that halo. Mario knows what halo is. Ooh, excuse me. So um, that baffled me somewhat. But yeah, I really love this colour of yarn. It's really nice. Oop. Let's try and get that out of the way. It's just every so often it's got purple speckly bits. So if I could find like a nice pom-pom, a fluffy furry pom-pom, um, preferably faux fur, in fact definitely faux fur, to go on the top of this, I think that would finish off beautifully. And yeah. It's very soft. So, mohair. Do I want a jumper out of it? No. Would I want a shawl out of it? No. Do I enjoy knitting a hat out of it? Kind of, except for the fluff in my everywhere where I have an orifice on my face. Um, let's not go there. Um, but do I want a hat out of it because it's incredibly soft? Yeah a lot of fluff you know don't know if I can fully endorse the mohair trend but um, 
I'm not a person that's going to tell you what to do. So I'm going to move on into stash enhancements, even though I said I haven't fattened my stash at all. Yes. Um, I did receive this month's knit crate, and I haven't opened it yet, but I am not going to be opening it in this video. If you want to know what I received in my knit crate, you can either wait till my next podcast or after I finish filming this podcast, I will be filming my knit crate box opening. I'm very slick. Um, so you can tune into that if that's something that interests you. Um, like I said, I'm having a shop update in my shop, um, the corner of craft.co.uk. I have quite a lot of double knit yarn. I have quite a lot of sock yarn. I have many autumnal colours. I even have a few Christmassy colours. I'm sorry, it's just where my brain was this week. Uh, and that shop update is on Saturday at 4pm British summer time, uh, which is 4pm British time, um, obviously. So I have some of these beauties in the shop as well as the skeins that are drying downstairs. Um, and I have some skins in the shop already. So feel free to check that out if that is something you're interested in. So let's get into life stuff. Oh, before I get into life stuff, I just want to do a little bit of shameless promotion. That was really loud, I'm really sorry. I hate hearing people swallow on podcasts. So, the place where I used to work uh, a few years ago before I moved to Germany, at the bead shop in Nottingham, uh, and a place where I actually buy most of my supplies from um, are currently hosting a Kickstarter campaign. So they uh, need to get their workshop room all done up and had got it all planned and sorted and ready to go and then something happened um, which I won't go into because it's not my place to share. Um, but basically they paid all this money for their workshop room to get done up and it has not got done up uh, so all the money that they were that they got out as a loan and such they can't get any more out um, and their workshop room has just kind of been left um, and needs a bit more work to do to it so they are hosting a Kickstarter campaign to raise five thousand pounds um, to build up work on make the workshop room fantastic again for workshops, children's parties, one-to-one -one sessions. If you didn't, if you're local to Nottingham and you didn't know that the bead shop did workshops, then now you do. I have hosted. I used to teach workshops there, and it's their um, their shop is in a really old Victorian building and. It's beautiful. Um, the workshop room is very light and airy. Just needs a bit of work doing to it, to you know, make it more appropriate for the use that they have it for. So they have launched a Kickstarter campaign. I'll pop a link to it in the description box below if you're interested in donating. Uh, they have some really amazing um, perks. I don't know what they're called. I don't know what the proper Kickstarter term is. Uh, but if, say, if you donate a certain amount, you get X, Y, and Z. Uh, but you can get bead kits if you're interested in beading yourself, which I know some of you are from when I used to do tutorials. Uh, you get bead kits, you can get um, workshops, you can buy a workshop for or a workshop space for a charity. So someone uh, that the charity supports could go and do a workshop and learn a skill. Um, you can buy beading patterns can buy tote bag. I don't know. It's just really cool. They have lots of really cool perks. So if that is something that you're interested in, and I mean, I'm just, I'm not being asked to say this. I'm not being asked to share this. I'm gaining nothing out of this. Um, I'm just putting it out there into the world because I can. But if you would like to help out the lovely people at the bead shop in Nottingham reach their goal. Um, feel free to click the link in the description box below or even just 
if you want to check it out and see what's happening over there. They have a great video on their YouTube page, which I shared uh, recently here on YouTube. So if that is something that you're interested in checking out, then thank you very much. I will appreciate it so much, as I know they will too. So, um, life, what's happened in life? I've started tap dancing classes. Oh, the sun's gone behind a cloud and now my light's gone weird. Now I look a bit ghostly. I've started tap dancing classes again, which is really cool. I used to do tap dancing um, before I went to university. Um, and then I went to university and then I didn't pick it up again. And it's now been about 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. Uh, since I last did tap dancing, then I found an adult tap dancing class and decided to take that. Um, I'm actually really bad at the moment, so that's really sad. I joined the advanced class thinking that I would be advanced because I did tap dancing for like 13 years or something crazy. Um, but it's, it's coming back to me. I'm out of, I'm completely out of practice of learning steps in a sequence, which sounds really stupid, but I just am. Um, my brain isn't used to remembering sequences of steps anymore, but I've only had two lessons, so I'm sure it will come back to me soon. Um, what else has been happening? So yeah, I'm really enjoying that. That's really good fun. Plus exercise, so win. Um, Mario and I went to Sherwood Forest, because... Uh, I live in Nottingham, as I've said. So we went to Sherwood Forest because they had a Robin Hood festival on. And so we went and checked that out. I have finally seen Major Oak. So that's cool. Um, which is where Robin Hood spent a lot of his time, apparently. I saw a man who was Robin Hood defeat a man who was the Sheriff of Nottingham. But Nottingham doesn't actually have a Sheriff in real life anymore. They were just actors. But it was still pretty cool. Lots of very excited children. And then, so that was at the beginning of, beginning of September, was it? When did I last podcast? Whatever. Um, so yeah, that was really fun. And it was a really, really hot, sunny day. And then the next day, it's like autumn just went and then autumn is here and it's actually quite cold it's never usually this cold this close to my birthday usually it's still sunny and warm and then it gets cold afterwards but nope um i had a few dungeons and dragons sessions which is fun um i play a half elf bard which is also fun um and I think that's about it. I've just been tidying my craft room. I've been working on uh, making stitch markers specifically for Nottingham Yarn Expo. I will be starting to dye yarn next week for Nottingham Yarn Expo. Um, but I've started with stitch markers specifically at the moment because they are my more time consuming craft. So I've got three sets completed. Um, I'm trying to take 10 of each for as many as I can make. Um, so I'll probably go back downstairs and be doing that after this. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Got some more wedding stuff sorted. Still need to find a photographer. I wanted to find a photographer by my birthday, but I don't think that's going to happen. We're off to Clumber Park this weekend. We are going to a food and drink festival in Clumber Park on Sunday. I'm going out for a few drinks on Saturday as like a birthday celebration -y thing. Um, so we shall see how that goes. Hopefully I'm not too hungover on Sunday because otherwise that will be horrendous. And my tea is now full. But yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, not much else to report. So. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Um, doesn't cost you anything, but if you would like to do it, feel free. 
Uh, also feel free to subscribe to this channel if you have found my company somewhat entertaining slash tolerable. Um, feel free to hit subscribe and my videos will pop up in your subscription feed uh, when they are posted. Um, social media links can all be found in the description box below as well as a link to the Corner of Craft podcast Ravelry group. Um, and don't forget to enter hashtag StashMuscal2018 to be in with a chance of winning some yarns and other things. Uh, and if you would like to donate any prizes for StashMuscal, let me know. Um, and with all that being said, Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in my next podcast.